Viewers at home, you are welcome to my presentation on transfer pricing. In this presentation, I'm going to examine the determination of the maximum transfer price per unit that the buying division would be willing to pay to achieve a residual income target. Or the determination of the minimum transfer price per unit that the selling division will be, would be willing to accept to achieve a targeted residual income. Remember, the residual income, residual income is equal to the divisional profit, divisional profit, less inputted interest. Divisional profit less inputted interest on capital employed. Divisional profit less inputted interest on capital employed. That is residual income. Inputted interest, that is the finance charge. Inputted interest will be calculated by multiplying the cost of capital. Cost of capital by the capital employed. Capital employed. There are various definitions of capital employed. Your capital employed. Capital employed. May be defined as the total assets. Total assets. That is one of the definitions of capital employed. And you may say capital employed is net asset. Net asset. Another word for net asset is equity. Another definition of capital employed is total assets minus current liabilities. All this definition will give different results. Total assets minus current liability. And you may say capital employed is equal to equity plus interest bearing loans. Equity plus interest bearing loans. There's a very definition of capital employed. But for the purpose of divisional performance, I think the examiner will have given you the capital employed. But in interpretations of financial statement, then you may choose to use the definition that suits the needs of the organization. So where the entity is financed by both equity and interest bearing loans, then you use capital employed, you define capital employed as equity plus interest bearing loans. That is examples we have the loan notes or debenture. Examples of interest bearing loans are the loan notes or debenture. So now we said let residual income is divisional profit less imported interest on capital employed. Now in the preparation of the income statement your income statement is revenue. Your income statement you used to start with revenue. Revenue less variable total variable cost. Less when you subtract total variable cost, you get the contribution. From the contribution, you less the total fees cost. By the time you deduct the total fees cost, you get the net profit, which is the divisional profit I'm talking about. Your net profit. Then from the net profit now, you less the inputted interest on capital employed. Inputted interest. After deducting the inputted interest, you get the residual income. Residual. Residual income. You get the residual income. ROI. Now, remember revenue is the plural of the price and the quantity. 
Price times quantity, that is your revenue. Your price, the price you want to determine is one of the variables that make up your revenue. Therefore, just make your revenue the subject of the formula. Then you have revenue equals to equals to the residual income, RI. Revenue equals to the residual income. Then, when you equate it to this, then take other variable at the left-hand side to go and join that residual income at the right-hand side. So this minus become plus. So plus inputted interest. When you add the inputted interest to the residual income, you get the divisional profit. Then you take the fixed cost to the right hand side. We have plus fixed cost. When you add the fixed cost, you get the contribution. Then you add the variable cost plus the variable cost. When you add the total variable cost, then you get the total revenue. Remember, the revenue is our focus here. But we have the selling division point of view and the buying division point of view. So, revenue. In selling division point of view, revenue will be divided into two. Revenue of the selling division now. In the selling division point of view, selling division, selling division revenue will comprises one. The revenue in yeah, external revenue and revenue from internal transfer. Revenue from internal transfer. That is the composition or component of revenue in selling division point of view. That means this revenue you have here, we comprise both revenue from external after making this the subject of the formula. After using this model or expression, this revenue we comprise this revenue to both the selling division and revenue to I mean, revenue, external revenue, and revenue from internal transfer. But if it is buying division, the revenue will be the revenue to external buyers alone. So we are still going to use the same model. ROI plus input interest plus fixed cost plus variable cost. Then you get the revenue. And that revenue will be the revenue from external customers. So that is in the buying division point of view. But I've told you that in the selling division point of view, it will be divided into external and internal transfer. Then the second one uh, variable I'm going to look at is variable cost. The variable cost, variable cost of production, variable cost of production. That is what I'm going to look at. Variable cost of production. In the buying division point of view, buying division point of view, variable cost of production is divided into two. We have variable cost from internal transfer, internal transfer, and other variable costs and others that is in the buying division point of view but if it is selling division the only variable cost we are going to have is other variable cost there will be no variable cost from internal transfer if it is selling division take note of that so remember i've told you that revenue minus variable cost minus fixed cost minus inputted interest i said that will give you the residual income when we made our revenue the subject of formula we have revenue equals to residual income ri residual income plus inputted interest plus fixed cost plus variable cost that is the revenue i'll tell you that this revenue is the product of price and quantity 
I want you to take note of that. Now, using this model now, so where you have to determine the maximum transfer price per unit. Maximum, maximum price per unit that the buying division division would accept would accept uh, I mean will be willing to pay by division would be willing to pay to pay to achieve a residual income target a residual income target you know this is in the buying division point of view that is the buying division point of view after that in the buying division point of view that the variable cost is divided into two internal and uh, i mean you have you have other variable cost and uh, internal transfer variable cost from internal transfer that is in the buying division point of view now using the same model you want to determine your revenue you know the transfer price is part of the revenue since revenue is price times quantity so make your revenue the subject of the formula the first variable is residual income so we have residual income residual income then after residual income the next thing is inputted interest we add inputted interest on capital employed by the time you add the inputted interest you get the divisional net profit you get the divisional net profit divisional To this net profit you have obtained, so we have considered residual income, then we've considered inputted interest. Then we get the divisional net profit. To the net profit we have, had, we have obtained, then you add the fixed cost. You add the fixed cost. So we add fixed cost. Fixed cost. By the time we add the fixed cost, you get the total contribution. Total contribution. To the contribution we have obtained, remember, we've considered the residual income, we've considered the imputed interest, we've considered the fixed cost. Then the next variable is variable cost. Now we add the variable cost. So we add the variable cost, total variable cost. By the time we add the variable cost, and uh, this is the buying division point of view. I've told you that in the buying division point of view, that the variable cost is divided into two. The variable cost internal, and the others. Variable cost, others, and uh, the variable cost, internal, internal transfer. Let me put internal. Remember, the internal will be what will be the variable cost from internal transfer will be the revenue from internal transfer, which will be the product of price times quantity. The price will not be given because that is what you want to determine here. But the quantity, the number of units to transfer will have been given in the question. So that means if you have price, let us assume this is 10,000 and this is not given. 
P times 10,000 will be 10,000 P. That means it will be in tens of P. So now you have PQ because it is not given. The P is not given. Then when you add it, you add the variable cost, you get total revenue. Total revenue. Remember the divine division only says externally. That means you have the market price where it is not given, revenue from external market. Where it is not given, you, you have the market price, market price, the external market price times quantity sold by the buying division. So this will be given. So that will give you the total revenue. But remember, this is a function. Since it is not given, then when you add up all this, you know, to this level, it's supposed to be total revenue. And you have the revenue from external, I mean from internal, then that will give you the total revenue. That means you are going to have this in terms of function. This, the total of this, total of this plus this equals to this. Then that means it will be revenue function. So revenue function, revenue function, This one would be in terms of function. This plus this plus this. That would be revenue function equals to this, which is the total revenue. So you now make P the subject of the formula in your revenue function. When you equate this to this, you make P the subject of the formula. Whatever value of P you obtain is the maximum price per unit that the buying division will be willing to pay to achieve the residual income target. Now, where it is not the residual income you are expected to determine, where you are given the net profit or a particular profit, the maximum price per unit that the buying division will be willing to, will be, will be willing to pay to achieve a profit target. That means you just start with that profit. That profit will be your distributional net profit. You start from here. You just start from divisional net profit, add fixed cost, you get the total contribution. You now add variable orders and variable from internal transfer, then you equate it to total revenue and you use this function to get, you use the revenue function to get the price required. So that is for that. So the next one I'm going to consider is the minimum transfer price per unit or the minimum price per unit that the selling division would accept to achieve a residual income target. That is the next one I'm about to consider. You are still going to use the same function. Revenue equal to residual income plus interest plus fiscal plus variable cost. And that will give you that. So the minimum transfer price per unit, determination of the minimum price, the minimum price per unit that the selling division that the selling division would accept would accept to achieve to achieve a residual, residual income target. So, you still start with the targeted residual income. The targeted residual income plus imputed interest plus fixed cost plus variable cost. So you have residual, residual income, targeted residual income, then you add inputted interest, inputted interest. So when you add the inputted interest, you get divisional profit, divisional profit. To the divisional profit, you add 
fixed cost. You add fixed cost, total fixed cost. You may have fixed administrative overhead, fixed selling and distribution, and fixed production. You add all the fixed cost. When you add the fixed cost, you arrive at the contribution, targeted contribution. After your contribution, you add the variable cost. You add the variable cost. I've told you that the only variable you will have cost you will have variable cost in the selling division point of view is the orders. There will be no variable cost from internal transfer. So when you add the variable cost, you have the total revenue. The total revenue. Total revenue. Total revenue. Remember, I've told you that in the selling division point of view, total revenue is divided into two. Revenue from external and the revenue from internal transfer. So when you less revenue from external now, less revenue from external. Revenue from external will be obtained by multiplying the number of units sold externally, quantity sold externally, multiplied by the market price. That is the external market price. So when you multiply that, that will give you the revenue from external. When you now subtract it from the total revenue, then the remaining balance will be revenue from internal transfer. Revenue from internal transfer. This will not be a function. It will not be a function. Unlike the case of the maximum price the buying division will be willing would be willing to pay to achieve a targeted profit. No, that one is function, but this one will not be a function. So then you now divide the revenue from internal transfer by the number of units transferred. Now have number of units transferred. So when you divide it now, you have the transfer price. Transfer price. That will be that will be the minimum price. It could be Y dollar. That will be the minimum price. The selling division will be willing to accept to achieve a residual income target. I therefore want to take questions as a work example. This is a comprehensive examination question obtained from Kepler ACCA Practice and Revision Kit Performance Management. Kepler ACCA Practice and Revision Kit Performance Management. Example CTD has two divisions, FD and TM. FD is an iron foundry division which produces moldings that have a limited external market and are also transferred to TM division. TM division uses the moldings to produce a piece of agricultural equipment called the TX, which is sold externally. Each TX requires one molding. Both divisions produce only one type of product. The performance of each divisional manager is evaluated individually on the basis of residual income. They used to evaluate the performance of the divisional manager on the basis of residual income. On the basis of residual income of his or her 
division. The company's average annual 12% cost of capital is used to calculate the fin finance charges, that is the imputed interest. If their own target residual income is achieved, each divisional manager is awarded a bonus equal to 5% of her residual income. The manager of the division will be entitled to 5% of her residual income if the targeted residual income is achieved in that division. Variable selling and distribution cost, $25 and four dollar for TM and FD respectively. Fees administrative overhead, twenty five dollar and four dollar for TM and FD. Net profit is twenty four dollar and twelve dollar respectively. Normal capacity in units is fifteen thousand and twenty thousand. Normal capacity is the same as the budgeted capacity. That is the budgeted quantity. Then maximum production capacity is fifteen thousand and 25,000 respectively. Sales to external customers in units. The number of units they can sell externally is 15,000 and 5,000 respectively for both divisions. Capital employed is 15,000 is 1.5 million and 750,000 respectively. Target residual income is 105,000 and 85,000 respectively. Then you were told that the variable cost of TX includes the cost of FD modings. External sales only, that is this. Now, this is asterisk. This is only one asterisk. What carries only one asterisk is 366. 366, yeah, carries only one asterisk. They are referring to variable production cost of TM, which carries one asterisk there is an asterisk here so and that is 366 so they are referring to that in the note below that the variable production cost of tx includes the cost of fd modding that means the variable co production cost of that 366 include the cost of fd that is the cost of the unit transferred now this is double asterisk now, what carries double asterisk? What carries double asterisk is this $4. And that is variable selling and distribution cost of FD modding. That it is the variable cost of FD modding that carries the double asterisk. Now, let's see the definition of that double asterisk. External sales only. That means it is that variable selling and distribution of FD. That is to say that it is the only unit sold externally that we incur the variable selling and distribution cost. External sales only of the modings incur a variable selling and distribution cost of $4 per unit. FD division currently transfers 15,000 units. This is the number of units they want to transfer. 15,000 units to TM. That is to show that TM, they want to transfer to the TM. That is to show that TM is the buying division. Buying division. Why FD is the selling division. At a transfer price equal to, this is the definition of their transfer price now. Equal to the total production cost. That means the transfer price now, you have to determine the total production cost of the selling division. Total production cost plus 10%. You mark up the production cost by 10%. Fixed costs are absorbed on the basis of normal capacity. We used to absorb your fee, our fixed costs based on the normal capacity. That is based on the budgeted production. Remember, fees overhead absorption rate is budgeted fees overheads over budgeted level of activity. Required. A. 
Calculate the bonus each divisional manager would receive under the current transfer pricing policy. Remember the policy is that if the targeted residual income is achieved, that the manager will be given a bonus of 5% of her residual income. So that means you will need to determine the residual income to know if that targeted residual income is achieved because you have been given the targeted residual income of both divisions. That is, the selling division, residual income of TM is 105,000 and that of LD is given to be 85,000. Meaning that any division that is able to achieve their own targeted residual income, the managers of that division will be paid a bonus of 5% of her targeted residual income. So, and discuss the implications that the current performance evaluation system may have for each division and for the companies as a whole. So you have to discuss the implications. B, both divisional managers want to achieve their respective residual income targets based on the budgeted figure. Calculate one, the maximum price per unit that the divisional manager of TM division would pay. Two, the minimum transfer price per unit that the divisional manager of FD division would accept. So that is the question. Now, solution. So I've told you that you want to know if those divisions are able to achieve their residual income target. That means you will need to prepare income statement to get the divisional profit, then you less the inputted interest to get the residual income. And now compare that residual income with the targeted one. You are given the targeted residual income to be $105,000 and $85,000. So now, remember you were told that the transfer price, transfer price equal to the total production cost plus 10%. Total production costs will comprise both fees and the variable production cost. Now, of the of the selling division. Now, remember TM is the buying division, YFD is the selling division. The production cost, now, you are given variable production cost, you are given fixed production cost. The variable production cost of the selling division is $40, and the fixed production cost of the selling division is $20. So you want to determine the transfer price. Remember the transfer price is the total production cost plus 10%. Now. Let's calculate the transfer price. Solution. You want to determine the transfer price. Transfer price of uh, the selling division, which is FD. So, I were told that the transfer price will be total production cost. Remember, the total production cost will comprise the variable, variable production cost. of $40, then we have fixed production cost of $20. That means the total production cost per unit will be $60 if you sum it up. That is the total production cost. Now, you now mark it up by 10%. 10% of 60, that will give us 6. When you sum it up, you have 66. Therefore, the transfer price is $66. Have we obtained the transfer price? Then, the next thing is to prepare the income statement, STD, the income statement. You are going to have both divisions, the selling divisions, and the buying divisions. Let's have this to be the selling division. Remember, uh, FD is the selling division. This is the buying division, which is TM. So you want to prepare the income statement for both divisions. 
Then in your income statement, you are starting with the revenue. The revenue. I've told you that you are going to categorize the revenues into internal and uh, external. Now let's have external. To get the revenue from external market, then that mean you have the number of units sold externally multiplied by the external market price. That will give you the revenue from external. External sales. The external selling price of TM. Remember, TM is the buying division, and FD is the selling division. The external selling price of the buying division is five hundred dollar, while that of the selling division is eighty dollar. I've told you that to get the revenue from external sales, you have the number of units sold externally. Remember, the external selling price we have five hundred and eighty dollar. Now, how much is the number of units sold? Externally, the number of units sold externally, then you will need that. So, the units sold external sales to external customers, sales to external customers in units 15,000 and 5,000. Now, remember the selling division sales to external customers is 5,000, while the buying division sales to external customers is 15,000. Now, let's have the revenue from external sales. Revenue from external sales. So, revenue. This is working. Let me see working one. Working. Working one. Revenue from external sales. That of FD. FD sold 5,000 units. No FD is a selling division. At the market price of $80. Then when you multiply that, that will give you the revenue from external sales. We have $400,000. Then that of TM, which is the buying division. Remember TM sold 15,000 units externally. We have 15,000 units at the external market price. The external market price of TM is $500 times $500. So then we have the 15,000 times 500. Then we have 7.5 million. 7.5 million. That is the revenue from external sales. 400,000 and the 7.5 million respectively. Now you can slot in that revenue. Then Estana, the selling division is 400,000. And while out of the buying division is 7.5 million. Then you also have revenue from internal transfer. Internal transfer. Revenue from internal transfer would be made at the transfer price. Will be made at the transfer price. And our transfer price has been determined above. And that is $66. Then how many units were transferred between FD and TM? The number of units transferred. You were told that FD division currently transfers 15,000 modems to TM. That means the number of unit transfer is 15,000. Therefore, the revenue from internal transfer now, revenue from internal transfer, revenue from internal transfer, internal transfer. The number of unit transfer is 15,000 units. 15,000 units at the transfer price at the transfer price of 66 dollar then 15000 times 66 15000 times 66 then we have 990000 990000 therefore revenue from internal transfer 
is 990,000. It's only the selling division that we have that. It is the selling division that we have revenue from internal transfer, which is 990,000. So when you sum it up, you have the total revenue. Total revenue, both internal and external. Let me label that A. 400 plus 990 will be 1,390. Then, 75 plus nothing. Then, the total revenue of the binding division will be 7.5 million. From revenue, you less variable cost. Variable cost. We want to consider all our variable costs. What are the makeup of the variable costs in this question? You go back to the question and identify the makeup of our variable cost. Now, you have variable selling and distribution. We have variable selling and distribution. Then we also have variable production cost. So that means we have variable production cost. Remember this asterisk is defined as the transfer price is included. Remember our transfer price has been determined to be 66. Now that means this 366 comprising the transfer price of 66, then the remaining 300 will be the other variable cost. That is for the buying division. Then the selling division now, the variable cost of the selling division is given to be $40. I mean, the variable production cost of the selling division is $40. Now, what will be the other variable cost? I want to consider the other variable cost first before I consider the variable cost from internal transfer. Order is 40 for the selling division. That of the buying division, orders will be 366 minus 66. You know the 66 there is the transfer price, which, are, which, which, will be the, the, which we have determined. Remember, you were told that this asterisk, asterisk, the one, only one asterisk, that the variable production cost of TS include the cost of FD modding. The cost of FD modding is the cost of the unit transferred from FD. That is what they are talking about. So now let's determine our variable production cost. Now let me start with orders. Variable production cost, orders. Working two. Working two. Variable production cost orders. I want to determine the other ones first. For FD is forty dollar multiplied by the number of units produced. But if you look at this question. The production, the only you were not given the you were given the maximum production capacity. The normal capacity I've told you that is budgeted capacity. The maximum production capacity they can produce what they can produce up to is twenty five thousand. But do they actually produce that twenty five thousand? That is what we want to determine here. You were told that sales to external customers is five thousand. If sales is five thousand and they transfer another fifteen thousand, that means. What they will put offer for sales, both internally and externally, will be twenty thousand dollar. Five thousand was sold externally. Why fifteen thousand will be transferred by FD division? Five thousand plus fifteen thousand that will give us twenty thousand. So now the total variable cost orders now will be on the total units produced, including the unit transferred. So that means you have. 5,000 units which was sold externally plus 15,000 units which were transferred. Then that means you have 20,000 units. 20,000 times $40. Since the variable production cost is $40 per unit, you have 40 times 20,000 and that gives us 800,000. That is other variable cost of FD division. That of TM. TM division. Now, for TM, how many units were produced and sold by TM? You know, TM is the buying division. That means all the production of TM will be sold externally. So the whole units TM sell is 15,000 units. 
and that is the number of units produced. The health capacity, maximum production capacity of TM is 15,000. They can produce 15,000 and they actually produce and sell that 15,000 to external customers. So now, the variable production cost of TM now, the others, uh, we were told that this 366 includes 66 being the transfer price. That means others will be 300. That is 366 minus the transfer price of 66. 366 366 minus 66, which is the transfer price, multiplied by the units, units sold, which is 15,000. So we have 366 minus the transfer price of 66, then you'll be left with 300. 300 times 15,000, then we have 4.5 million dollars. 4.5 million dollars that is the other variable cost of the tm so that means other variable cost of ah uh, 4.5 million respectively so we have variable production cost variable cost which is very which include variable production cost production cost we are talking about the others. That of selling division is 800,000. And that of the buying division is 4.5 thousand. Then I told you that the buying division would also incur variable costs from internal transfer, apart from others. Then you also have variable costs from variable costs that is that of internal transfer, which will be, will be incurred at the transfer price, which is $66 as determined, multiplied by the unit transfer, which is 15000 That will give us 66 times 15000 Then we have 990000 I've told you that it will be tantamount to the revenue obtained. For the selling division. So then variable cost, variable production cost from internal transfer, internal transfer. After that, it is the buying division that will that will incur that, which is 990. Now, any other variable cost apart from those two, we've considered the variable production cost. Variable production cost has been considered. We've considered the variable production cost. Then we also have variable selling and distribution cost. The number of units sold by the buying division is 15,000. But this one, the units sold by the selling division is 5,000. 5,000 units were sold externally. I told you that the unit transfer will not incur that. Will not incur the variable cost of selling. So the four thousand, uh, the five thousand is what well, is the only one that will incur the variable cost of selling, variable cost of selling and distribution, which is four times five thousand, and that will give us twenty thousand. Then this one now, fifteen thousand times twenty five dollar, so that will give you the variable cost of selling. Working three. Variable cost of selling and distribution cost. Variable selling. Variable selling and distribution cost. The FD, which is the selling division. We only incur that variable cost on unit transferred externally. Uh, I mean, on the unit sold externally, which is 5,000 times 4, which is $20,000. Then YTM, we incur that variable cost on all the units produced and sold, and which is the variable cost of selling of TM is $25. So we have $25 times 15,000. So 15,000 times 25 then we have 
$375,000. Now we can slot in the variable selling and distribution now. Variable selling and uh, distribution. Variable selling and uh, distribution. That of FG is $20,000. And that of TM is $375. Any other variable cost? So there is none others. So we can sum up our variable cost to get total variable cost. Let me have that as B. 800 plus 20, that will give us 820. Therefore, 5 plus 990 plus 375. There you have it to be 5865. 5865. When you less all your variable costs from the total revenue, total revenue obtained, there you get total contribution. Total contribution. Remember, contribution will be your revenue less total variable cost. So the total contribution now for FD we have 570. Why that of TM is 1635. 1635. Having obtained the contribution, you less the fixed cost, fixed production overheads. I've told you that the fixed production overheads will be absorbed. That you are going to absorb your fixed production overheads based on the normal capacity you don't flex that you have fixed production overheads now let me have that to be working for working for you absorb it based on the normal capacity and what is our fixed production overheads absorption rate and the normal capacity you are given the fixed overheads absorption rate for the buying division, you are given $60 and selling division $20. And the normal capacity for the buying division is $15,000 and selling division is $20,000. So you are going to have the $20,000 multiplied by 20 and $15,000 multiplied by 60 That will give you the fixed overheads. Now, working for fixed production overheads that is working for working for we have fixed production overheads that of fd you have the capacity the normal capacity which is 20000 units 20000 units Multiply by the fixed overhead absorption rate for FD, which is $20. That of TM, the normal capacity of TM, <coughs> and that is 15,000 units. 15,000 units multiplied by the $60. So when you multiply it out, then your fixed production overheads for FD. Fixed production overheads for FD is $400,000. $400,000. And that of TM is $900,000. $900,000. Now, you can slot in that in our income statement. The fixed production overheads, we have $400,000 and uh, and the 900,000. Aside the fixed production overheads, any other fixed cost, you check the question. So we also have fixed administrative overheads. Fixed administrative overheads. We have considered fixed production. Then we are left, left with fixed administrative overhead, which is 25 and 4 dollars respectively. So for fixed administrative overheads, you multiply your your 
rate 25. I mean, four dollar for the selling division multiplied by the normal capacity of 20,000. Then 25 dollar for the buying division multiplied by the normal capacity of 15,000. Oh, well, yeah, now fixed administrative overheads. Fixed administrative overheads. Let me have that to be working, working five. Working five. We have fixed administrative administrative overheads. Fixed administrative overheads. That of F D. You have the normal capacity, which is 20,000 units, multiplied by the fees of assumption rate of four dollar fees administrative overheads assumption rate of four dollar. Then for TM, the normal capacity of TM is 15,000 units, multiplied by the fees of assumption rate of 25 dollar. Then you have fees administrative. This will give us eighty thousand dollar, and this gives us three seventy five thousand dollar. Three seventy five thousand dollar. Then you can then slot them in to our income statement. Fees administrative. Overheads, fees, admin, overheads, that is working five. Then this is $80,000 and, and this one is $375,000. When you less all the Fees cost from the contribution of 570 minus 400 minus 80, then you have the division and profit. That is the net profit. Net profit. The net profit of the selling division is $90. Then 1635 minus 900 minus 375 then you have 360 dollar that is the net profit from the net profit you less inputted interest inputted interest inputted interest of the selling division you have been given the cost of capital of both division to be 12 percent you have been told that the cost of capital is 12%. So, you were told the company's average annual 12% cost of capital is used to calculate the finance charges. So, you calculate 10% of capital employed. 12% of capital employed. For this division, the capital employed, I mean for the buying division, capital employed is, is 1.5 million. If you calculate 12% of 1.5 million, that will give us 180,000. 12% of this is 180,000. That is the inputted interest of the buying division. Now 180,000. That is for the buying division. The capital employed of the selling division is given to be 750,000. 12% 12 of 750,000, that will give us 90,000. When you subtract the imported interest from the net profit obtained, then you have the divisional, I mean, you have the residual income. Residual income. This one is me. Why this will be 180? Then you are given the targeted residual income. What is the target? Targeted residual 
income. Now we go back to the question. The targeted residual income, targeted RI, is 105,000 for the buying division, and that of the selling division is 85,000. So we have targeted residual income, 85,000, and uh, and the 105,000. This one is 85,000. And this is 105,000. This division was unable to meet the residual income target because the residual income is nil. And this one meets the target because you are having 180,000 and the targeted one is 105,000. That means the managers of this division will be paid a bonus. How much will be the pay a bonus or bonuses that will be paid to that manager? Bonus now, you were told that if they are able to meet the residual income target, 5% of the residual income will be paid as bonus. So 5% of 180,000. No, their residual income is 180,000, not the targeted one, their actual residual income. 5% of 180,000, and that will give us 9,000 as the bonus. That is the amount of bonus. So the first aspect of the question has been answered. Okay. Now let's go back to the requirement. The bonuses has been calculated. So you have to calculate the bonus each divisional manager will receive under the current transfer pricing policy. That bonuses have been calculated. It is only the buying division that will receive a bonus of the 9,000. While selling division receives nothing. Then and discuss the implication that the current performance evaluation system may have for each division and for the company as a whole. What is the implications of that policy? Now, now we want to discuss the implications now. Implications of the current, current reward system. Implications of the current reward system. That is, giving 5% bonus to a division that is able to meet the targeted residual income. What will be the implications of that? The manager of TM, you know, it is only TM that is able to earn the bonus of 9,000. Why FD did not receive any bonus? Because FD was unable to meet the targeted residual income. So the manager of TM has received the bonus of $9,000, which he will be pleased with. That is, the managers of TM will be pleased, will be happy about that bonus of 9,000. The manager of FD, FD has received nothing. So this may not be too motivating. The, the manager of FD, they will, not be able, they will not be happy about that since they have not received any bonus. So this may not be too motivating and may lead to problems within the divisions as a whole. Problems such as inefficiency, staff turnover, and lack of reliance on the performance of FD division staff. So, since the TM division relies absolutely on the FD division as the suppliers of the raw materials they need for their production, therefore, the situation is not ideal. The situation is not ideal since. TM divisions, since the TM division relies absolutely on the FD divisions as the suppliers of the raw materials they need for their production. Therefore, the situation is not ideal. That is the solution to that aspect of the question. Now, let's look at the B aspect of the question. B. Both division and manager want to achieve their respective residual income. So, everybody want to achieve their res respective residual income so that they will be entitled to bonuses. Now, want to achieve their respective residual income targets based on the budgeted figure. You have to calculate the maximum transfer price per unit that the divisional manager of TM division will be would pay. Remember, TM is the buying division. If TM wants to achieve their they are targeted profit. How much is the maximum price that that division will be willing to pay for the materials they want to buy from FD? So in order to be able to meet that residual income target. 
Remember, TM is the buying division. I've given you the format for that. I've told you that to start with, I mean, to determine the minimum transfer price, I mean, the maximum transfer price per unit that the divisional manager of TM, that is the buying division, would pay to achieve their re residual income. That you are going to start with the targeted residual income. The targeted residual income of the buying division is given to be $85,000. Now let's start with that. Now we have the maximum, maximum price, maximum price that TM, remember TM is the buying, buying division would be willing to pay to achieve the residual income target. Now, you are going to start with the targeted residual income. Targeted residual income of TM. The TM residual income is given to be $85,000. Then to this residual income, you add inputted interest. Based on the format I've given you, you add inputted interest. After that, to calculate the inputted interest, you multiply the cost of capital by the capital employed. The cost of capital is given to be 12%. The cost of capital is 12%. So, 12%. We were told the company's average annual 12% cost of capital is used. So, the cost of capital is 12%. How much is the capital employed of TM? The capital employed of TM is 750000 So, that means you have the... You have 12% of 750000 so 12% of 750,000. So by the time you calculate 12% of 750,000, then the maximum price that TM, no TM is the buying division, will be willing to pay. So the Capital employed of TM is twelve is seven fifty thousand. Then if that is seven fifty thousand, twelve percent of seven fifty thousand, then you have it to be ninety thousand. Ninety thousand. By the time you add ninety thousand to eighty five thousand, you have divisional net profit. Divisional net profit which is 175000 after this you add in uh, you add fixed cost and we have fixed production cost fixed production cost and we also have fixed administrative cost fixed admin cost. Remember, I've told you that your fixed cost will be absorbed based on normal capacity. So, you know what we are calculating is that of the buying division. The fixed cost, fixed production is $20 for the, sorry. So, I'm working for, it's okay, sorry, TM is the buying division. That means the inputted interest will be 12% of, of 1.5 million. 12% of 1.5 million. TM is the buying division, so we are using the data for TM. The targeted residual income of TM is 105,000. Then, 12% of 1.5 million, then you have that to be 
180,000. If you add 180,000 to 105,000, 180,000, when you add it to 105,000, then you have division and net profit to be 285,000. Then you now add fixed production cost of TM. I've told you that that will be absorbed based on the normal capacity. The normal capacity of TM is 15,000 units. The fixed production cost of TM is $60. Why the fees at me is $25. So we need $60 and $25. So for fixed production, then we have $60 multiply by the normal capacity of 15,000. That of administrative, $25, multiply by the normal capacity of 15,000. So then that will give us the first production, we have $900,000. The first administrative overheads is 75,000. When you add the fixed cost to the divisional net profit, you have the targeted contribution. Targeted and that is one million five sixty thousand. After that, then you add variable production and variable selling. Now, variable, variable production overheads. Remember, this is the buying division. I've told you that the variable production overheads will be divided into two. We have that of orders and that of internal transfer. Since it is buying division. Now, how much is the variable production of the vine division? The variable production is 366. And you were told the formal transfer price of $66 is included. That means the orders is 300. So this 66 is not the transfer price, it's not the maximum price that the buying division will be willing to pay you need so if you remove that transfer price the earlier transfer price of 66 then you'll be left with 300 and the variable selling is 25 dollar let me consider that first orders will now be 300 variable production orders that is 366 minus 66 multiplied by how, what is the number of units uh, bought and sold? And that is 15,000 units. 300,000. Uh, sorry, 300. When you have 366 minus 66, that will give us 300. 300, 300 times, times 15,000. 15,000 times 300. There we have 4.5 million. This one will be 4.5 million. The one from internal transfer will be the transfer price, which is not no. Multiply by the number of units transferred, and the number of units transferred is 15,000. That will be 15,000 P. Any other variable cost? We also have variable selling and distribution. Variable selling and uh, distribution. Variable selling and uh, distribution. Now you are given the variable selling and distribution cost to be $25 for the buying division. So we have $25. Multiply by the number of units sold. $25. So, P times 15,000. This is 15,000 P. It should be in terms of P. So, the variable selling and distribution 
is twenty-five dollar. Twenty-five dollar times fifteen thousand, and that will be twenty-five dollar times fifteen thousand. Then we have three seventy-five thousand dollar. Three seven five thousand. Now, when you sum up all this, you have one million five sixty thousand plus plus uh, four point five million plus. 15,000p, so that means you can't add this to it because it is unlike. Plus 375,000. Then you have 6 million 435,000 plus 15,000p. Plus 15,000p. Let me write it where. Six million four thirty five thousand plus fifteen thousand P. That is the total revenue. That is total revenue function. Total revenue function. I've told you that. You are going to equate the total revenue function since this is the buying division. The total revenue function of the buying division is six million four thirty-five thousand plus fifteen thousand p equals to the revenue of the buying division. Now you were told that the Market price, external selling price, that of TM. You know TM is the buying division. The external market price or external selling price of TM is $500. Now, how many units were sold by TM? The sales to external customers is 15000 Sales to external customers in units is 15000 Therefore, you have 500 times 15000 And that will give you the revenue of TM. So we have $500 times the number of units sold. Now, this will be 6,435,000 plus 15,000 P equals to 500 times 15,000. This will give us 7.5 million. 7.5 million. You may collect the like terms. If you collect the like terms, then you are going to have 15,000p by making p the subject of the formula equal to 7.5 million. 7.5 million minus 6 million for 35,000. So, um, we will now be having 15,000p equals to, when you subtract that, minus 6,435,000, then we have 1 million, equal to 1 million and 65,000. To solve for p, you divide both sides by 15,000. So, that is to show that p will be 1 million and 65,000 divided by 15,000. So, if you divide that by 15,000, then you have $71. $71. So that is the maximum price. That is the maximum transfer price per unit that the divisional manager of TM, that is the buying division, would pay to achieve the target residual income. That is solution to B1. B2 now. You have to determine the minimum transfer price per unit that the divisional manager of FD, remember FD is the selling division, would accept. So how much is the minimum, minimum transfer price per unit that 
FD would accept to achieve the target residual income. That FD would accept to achieve the target residual income. That is the next requirement. Now, B2. B2. So, you want to determine the minimum? Minimum price that FD. Remember, FD is the selling division. Selling division would accept accept to achieve the targeted residual income. So after that, you should start with the targeted residual income. Targeted residual income of FD. No, FD is the selling division. That means the targeted residual income you need is that of the selling division. Now, you were given the residual income target of FD. That is the selling division to be $85,000. So you have $85,000. Dollar eighty five thousand dollar. Then you add inputted interest. Inputted interest. I've told you that you multiply your cost of capital, which is twelve percent, by the capital employed. The capital employed of FD is seven fifty thousand. Twelve percent of seven fifty thousand. Twelve percent of seven fifty thousand. That gives us. 90,000. If you add 90,000 to 85,000, 85, then you have 175,000. The 175,000 is the divisional net profit. Divisional net profit. Divisional net profit. Then to this, you add the fixed cost. And our fixed cost was divided into fixed production overheads. Fixed production. Remember, I've told you that your fixed cost will be absorbed based on the normal capacity and fixed administrative overheads. Fixed admin overheads. You know the capacity, the normal capacity is what we are going to consider, not the production, not the actual production. The normal capacity. You were given the normal capacity to be 20,000 units. That is the normal capacity. And you are given the fixed production overheads of the selling division. Fixed production overhead is $20 and fixed administrative overhead is $4. So we need $20 and $4 and $4 respectively. So we have $20 multiplied by 20,000 units. And this will be $4 multiplied by 20,000 units. So, if you have $20 multiplied by 20,000 units, that will give us $400,000. Then, $4 times 20,000 units, that will give us $80,000. So you now sum up everything. 175,000 plus 400,000 plus 80,000, there you have 655,000. 655,000. That is the targeted contribution. Targeted contribution. Then to this contribution, having added the fixed cost, the next thing is the variable cost. You add the variable cost, so we have variable production and the variable sellings. Variable 
production overheads available selling and uh, distribution overheads remember variable cost changes as the output changes the variable production overheads remember this is for selling division the selling division will only incur orders there will be no variable production overheads for internal transfer interdivisional transfer so the variable production overheads of the selling division is 40 dollar and the variable selling and distribution overheads uh, is four dollar remember the variable selling and distribution overheads we only affect the number of units sold externally so the interdivisional transfer will not incur that so now the variable production overheads now which is 40 dollar how many units were produced and sold remember 5000 units will be sold externally 5000 units will be sold externally why 15000 units will be transferred so now others now will be you know the variable production overheads variable production overheads others we have we are given 40 dollar multiply by you know 15000 units were trans were to be transferred why 5000 units will be sold externally making 20000 20000 then the variable selling and you are given four dollar and i've told you that that will affect the units sold externally so 40000 i mean 40 dollar times 20000 units and that will give us eight hundred thousand dollar then four times five thousand that will give us twenty thousand dollar those are the variable costs we have when you sum up when you sum it up six five five thousand targeted contribution plus variable production plus variable selling then you have total revenue total revenue will be that will be one million four seventy five thousand after that like this total revenue we comprises revenue at external and internal revenue so i've told you that you less external revenue external revenue Remember the number of units sold externally is 5,000 units multiplied by the external market price. Uh, how much is the price per unit? These items were sold by FD at 80, external selling price. External selling price is $80. So $80, 5,000 times 80, times $80. So when you multiply that, then the revenue from Esana will be 400,000. 400,000. When you less that, then you'll be left with 1 million and 75,000. 1 million and 75,000. This will be revenue from interdivisional transfer. Revenue from internal transfer revenue from interdivisional transfer and how much is the number of units transferred number number of units transferred number of units transferred is 15000 units Now, you now divide this revenue by the number of units, the transfer price now. 
which is one million and seventy-five thousand divided by one million and seventy-five thousand divided by fifteen thousand, and that will give us seventy-one point six seven dollar. Seventy-one point six seven dollar. Please, if you have not subscribed in the past, remember subscription is once and for all. Once you have subscribed, you don't need to resubscribe again. If you have not subscribed in the past, please hit the red subscribe button and turn on the notification bell icon so that you'll be able to receive a notification message each time I drop a new video. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thank you and God bless you. That is the end of the solution to that question. So you should be expecting more presentation from me, my subsequent presentations on transfer pricing. Thanks.